Welcome to module 2 of the course Genome Editing and Engineering, where we are discussing about the breakage and repair of genomic DNA. In the last class, we discussed about the various methods by which or the phenomena by which the DNA of a cell gets broken. Today, we are going to discuss how once this DNA is broken, the cell repairs it. So, briefly, we will be discussing today about the repair of genomic DNA. So, this figure is now familiar to you. We spoke about the DNA damaging agents in the last lecture and how they create different type of DNA damages. Now, once the DNA damage has been inflicted, there are several DNA repair mechanisms in this inside the cell which takes care of the broken DNA and if this DNA is left unrepaired, it will uh, lead to mutagenesis and cause several genetic disorders. So, what are the different types of DNA breakage repair systems inside the cell? So, we have classified them into 8 main types which may be photoreactivation or reversal of DNA damage or base excision repair, nucleotide excision repair, mismatch repair, translation synthesis, interstrand crosslink repair or ICL repair, single stranded break repair and double stranded break repair. In this lecture, we will be discussing the first 7 repair mechanisms. The double stranded break repair will be discussed in detail separately. Let us start with the first type of repair that is used by the cell whenever a DNA is broken. This is a photoreactivation or reversal of DNA damage. So, what is photoreactivation? Photoreactivation. It is a process by which UV inactivated organisms restore their function by repairing UV in this induced images within the energy of near UV light which is 310 to 410 nanometers and this is done with the help of an enzyme called photolyze. UV photolations and alkylated bases are two types of DNA lesions that can be easily reversed in an error free way in lower organisms and mammals through photolyze mediated photo reactivation of UV lesions. So, once the DNA is damaged by UV light, it will create certain lesions and these lesions are repaired with the help of these enzyme. Now, what are the different kinds of UV induced damage? So, depending on the type of the UV, so you have UVA induced DNA damage as you can see in the left arm marked by the number 1 or you may have UVB induced DNA damage in the right arm represented by the number 2. So, once UVA induced damage occurs, it leads to oxidative stress and DNA photoproducts like 8 oxo deguilations are formed. UVA induced damage may also lead to immunosuppression in certain cases and whenever there is a DNA photoproducts as a outcome of this damage, it leads to the mutagenesis. Similarly, due to UVB induced damage, certain DNA photoproducts are produced like cyclobutin pyrimidine dimer or 6,4-PP and similar to the UVA induced DNA photoproducts, they also lead to mutagenesis inside the cell. And when there is mutagenesis due to any of these UV induced damages, it leads to failure of apoptosis and which may lead to some kind of cancers. We will discuss this in detail in a stepwise manner. So, let us first discuss the CPD or cyclobutene pyrimidine dimer repair via photolyze activity. So, as you can see that whenever a UV ray is hitting the DNA, there is a 
formation of cyclobutene pyrimidine dimer or CPD dimer in the DNA. Now, in the presence of visible light, the photolyse binds to this CPD lesion and repairs it and thereby reverting it back to the monomeric DNA. What is the nature, structure and function of this particular enzyme which carries out this kind of reversal reaction in the presence of visible light? So, DNA photolyse is basically a monomeric flavin dependent repair enzyme with uh, 420 to 616 amino acid residues varies from species to species. It contains two known cofactors, a catalytic cofactor and a light harvesting cofactor. Reduced flavin adenine dinucleotide FADH minus work as the catalytic cofactor in all photolyses. It transfers energy to the cyclobutene pyrimidine dimers in the form of an electron breaking the cyclobutene ring and producing two monomeric bases and you can see the location of the reduced FADH over here. This is the ribbon structure of photolyse, DNA photolyse. And here you can see the surface potential representation. There is a dashed box over here which marks the hole leading to FAD. The positive blue colors and the negative red colors charged residues are represented in this figure in a color code. Now, going back to the structure of this enzyme. The light harvesting cofactor include 5, 10 MTHF, 8 hydroxy, 5 diazo riboflavin or 8 HDF and FMN. They absorb light energy and transfer them to FADH reduced. Let us see the photoreactivation reaction a little bit of more detail. Whenever there is UV exposure this causes pyrimidine lesion for example, the thymidine dimer formation uh, which we have discussed now and then. Whenever these thymine dimer formation takes place the photolyse or the photoreactivating enzyme detects these damage. The antenna molecule of the photolyse such as the MTHF, 8 HDF and FMN, here you can see them, trap the light energy and transfer it to the catalytic cofactor FADH which becomes excited and it transfers energy to the pyrimidine dimer in the form of a electron. They are by splitting the CPD into two monomeric units and then the electron is transferred back to the flavin molecule. And in this way, the damage is repaired. What happens in humans and other mammals? In these higher organisms, two different classes of enzymes reverse the alkylated bases. These are O6 alkyl guanine. DNA alkyl transferase or AZT MGMT, then O alkylated DNA lesions are reversed with this AGM, uh, AG, AGT MGMT. And like uh, O6 methyl, ethyl, 2 chloroethyl, benzene, and lithic groups, let us now discuss how similar lesions are repaired in humans and other mammals. In them, there are two different classes of enzymes which reverses the alkylated bases. In the first case, O6 alkyl guanine DNA alkyl transferase enzyme can reverse O alkylated DNA lesions like O6 methyl ethyl 2 chloroethyl 
benzynyl aliphatic groups, the guanine pyridoyl oxybutyl adducts or the GPD adducts. It can also repair the O6Z alkyl O6Z interstrand crosslinks. A single AGT molecule can eliminate the alkylation adduct in a single step reaction by transferring the alkyl group from the oxygen of the DNA base to the cysteine residue in its catalytic pocket. In a second case, the elk B related alpha clitoglutarate dependent dioxygenases elk B mediates reversal and it reverses the N alkylated base adducts. Elk B family proteins hydroxylate an alkyl group in alpha clitoglutarate and iron to dependent manner for demethylation. The oxidized alkyl group is released as formaldehyde leaving behind the original base. Let us now go to another type of DNA damage repair which is known as the base excision repair or BER or BER. The oxidative deamination, alkylation and A basic single base damage types that do not significantly deform the DNA helix are corrected by base excision repair. Base excision repair is mostly active in the G1 phase of the cell cycle. Base excision repair mechanism requires chromatin remodeling at the site of DNA damage followed by detection of the DNA lesion by DNA glycosylase. Many different glycosylases are involved in base excision repair, each of which distinguishes and eliminates a specific modified base or bases from the DNA. This DNA glycosylase can be classified into two categories in terms of their function. The first here the monofunctional and the second are the bifunctional. The monofunctional with only glycosylase activity, example uracil glycosylase is mu to I homolog and N methylpurine DNA glycosylase. Bifunctional have both glycosylase and beta lyase activity and examples are DNA glycosylase 1, nylag like DNA glycosylase 1 and nylag like DNA glycosylase 2. In addition, a few DNA glycosylase connect as both mono and bifunctional enzymes. Examples include nylag like DNA glycosylase 3 and 8 oxoguanin DNA glycosylase. Monofunctional and bifunctional DNA glycosylases vary in their DNA damage SARS pattern, recognition of the damage site and excision. Monofunctional uracil and glycosylase or UNG searches for uracil in DNA through random interaction forming an open conformation. Once it comes in contact with DNA, it transforms to the closed conformation for base interrogation. The selected bases are then flipped out of the DNA duplex and put into the catalytic pocket of the enzyme where specific hydrogen bonds align the base for nucleophilic attack by an activated water molecule that has been placed by a conserved aspartic acid residue. It then removes the recognized base through the catalytic cleavage of the glycosidic bone leaving an A basic site without disturbing the phosphate sugar DNA backbone. The A basic site is subsequently repaired by a series of enzymes that cleave the backbone, insert the replacement residue and ligate the DNA strand. So many functions being carried out at the same time. The A basic sites produced by monofunctional DNA glycosylases are repaired through short patch repair pathway. On the other hand, Bifunctional enzymes initiate the long patch repair pathway after the formation of A basic sites. In short patch repair, AP endonuclease act on the A basic site, which breaks the phosphodiester bond 5 prime to the A basic site and produces a hydroxyl residue at the 3 prime end, leaving a deoxyribose phosphate at the 5 prime end. Tailoring of this repair gap is carried out by the 5 prime DRP lyase activity of Paul beta followed by filling the single, single nucleotide gap by Paul beta 
and ligation by either DNA ligase 1, leg 1 or a complex of DNA ligase 3, leg 3 and XRCC1 which is X-ray repair cross complementing protein 1. In the long patch repair pathway, the repair gap tailored by the 3 prime phosphodiesterase activity of AP endonuclease 1. There after Paul B or Paul delta epsilon fills the gap particularly in proliferating cells in a strand displacement manner followed by flap removal by the flap endonuclease and a DNA ligase 1 mediated ligation. So, this figure shows the mechanism of base excision uh, repair pathway. In figure 1 on the left side, you can see demi specific DNA glycosylase recognize and remove the damaged DNA base resulting in an abasic site. So, this is the DNA glycosylase. So, APE1 binds to this AB6 site and cleave the DNA backbone and you can see here the outcome. This results in a single strand break with a 5 prime DRP or 5 prime deoxyribose phosphate moiety. The DRP lies activity of Paul beta removes the 5 prime DRP and inserts a new undamaged nucleotide into the gap. Finally, the leak 3 A XRCC1 complex completes short patch base excision repair by sealing the remaining nick in the phosphodiester backbone. So, here you can see the damage and finally, the damage is being healed at the end of this pathway. Let us go to the second case where uh, if the 5 prime DRP moiety is resistant to the DRP lyase activity of Paul B, a polymerase switch to Paul delta epsilon takes place. So, uh, here this Paul B is ineffective that is the reason why this switched to this side of this reaction arm where Paul delta and epsilon will be helping it in repairing the damage. This generates a 5 prime flap structure which is recognized and excised by fan 1 or flap endonuclease 1. So, this will be removed by this fan 1 in a proliferating cell nuclear antigen dependent manner. To complete the patch base excision repair DNA ligase 1, here it is leak 3, here it is ligase 1 in association with the PCNA seals the remaining nick in a DNA backbone and this is getting resolved or repaired through the long patch base excision repair. Let us now go to the third type of DNA damage repair which is called as the nucleotide excision repair or NER. Bulky DNA lesions such as CPDs or cyclobutin pyrimidin dimers and 64 photoproducts 64 PPs resulting out of UV radiation benzoapyrin adducts and some other DNA damages are repaired by the nucleotide excision repair mechanisms. The two major branches of NER, one is the global genome NER, the other the, another one is the transcription coupled NER, 
briefly they are known as GGNER and TCNER. We will discuss their mechanisms one by one. GGNER can occur anywhere in the genome whereas TCNER is responsible for the accelerated repair of lesions in the transcribed strand of active genes. So, you can see here the transcription couple repair in the left arm and you can see the global excision repair in the right arm. And the players involved in the two process differ from one another uh, in, in the starting towards the end uh, they, they merged to the same pathway. So, let us see this figure uh, keenly. The DNA damage that is happening over here is recognized differently depending on whether DNA is transcriptionally active or transcriptionally inactive. If the DNA is transcriptionally active, transcription couple repair will take place. If it is inactive, the global excision repair will take place. After the initial recognition step, the damage is repaired in a similar manner as already told to you with the final outcome being the restoration of the normal nucleotide sequence. So, here you can see the damage in one of the strands and finally, this damage is taken care of and the normal nucleotide sequence is restored. So, we will not go into details of the various factors and enzymes which are involved uh, in this mechanism and those are shown here in this figure. Uh, for your interest, you may study these pathway to understand the mechanism uh, in detail. As already told to you, the global genomic nucleotide excision repair can occur anywhere in the genome whereas TCNER is responsible for the accelerated repair of lesions in the transcribed strand of active genes. GGNER is initiated by the GGNER specific factors XPC red 23B in some cases with the help of UV DDB or UV damaged DNA binding protein. In GGNER two protein complexes are associated with the detection of DNA damage. The first protein complex is composed of XPC, Geroderma pigmon, pigmentosum group C, red 23B, UV excision repair protein red 23 homolog B and centrin 2 a protein encoded by the CTN2 gene. At first this complex recognizes the DNA damage that disrupts the normal Watson Crick base pairing. The XPC protein contains two hairpin structures. In the second stage, the DNA binding domain of XPC binds with the non-hydrogen bonded bases of double stranded DNA and inserts a beta hairpin through a DNA duplex. This causes the damaged base to flip out of the DNA double helix. The second complex is UV binding DNA damage protein consisting of DDB2, DDB1, CAL4A or CAL4B and RBX1. This complex enhances the binding of XPC, RAT23B and Centrin2 protein complex to the damaged DNA. Global genomic nucleotide excision repair uh, involves the UV DDB complex which generally binds with UV generated lesions including pyrimidine, pyrimidine, uh, uh, pyrimidine uh, pyrimidone photodimers or 6 for PPDs and cyclobutane pyrimidine dimers or CPDs. It also recognizes DNA with apurinic or apyrimidinic or epicytes and base misbases. NER excises 24 to 32 nucleotide DNA segments containing a broken link with extreme precision in higher eukaryotic cells. The final stages of DNA repair is reparative synthesis utilizing an undamaged strand as a template followed by ligation of the single strand break caused by the damage. So, this is the schematic representation 
of uh, GG any air pathway wherever a DNA damage uh, occurs as already discussed to you XPC HR 23B detects it and this follows a cyclic pathway and at the end of which the DNA is repaired and the final nick sealing is done with the help of ligase 1 or ligase 3. There are various proteins involved in this pathway the details of which are uh, in listed in this table uh, and these proteins have various uh, carry out different functions. For example, this XPC HR 23B uh, is used for the recognition of the distorted DNA structure as already told to you. Then DDB recognizes damage and it interact with the chromatin. XPA has a structural uh, function binding to a demise, demise strand. RPA it binds to a single stranded DNA. Then uh, TF2H it has ATPase activity, minor helicase activity, uh, 3 prime to 5 prime DNA helicase activity. XPAs have endonuclease and catalyzes the formation of single stranded break in DNA on the 5 prime side of the damage. XPZ it is an endonuclease which catalyzes the formation of single strand break in DNA on the 3 prime side of the damage. PCNA is a factor which ensures processivity of the DNA polymerases. Pol delta, pol epsilon uh, they are DNA polymerases. Ligase 3 and ligase 1 uh, participates in the ligation of the single strand breaks and RFC is a ATP dependent connection of the PCNA A. Let us now examine the transcription coupled nucleotide excision repair or the TCNER. This is a specialized nucleotide excision repair system known as transcription coupled nucleotide excision repair which repairs DNA damage in the transcribed strands of active genes. The TCNER pathway is limit initiated by helix distorting lesions that block the progression of elongating RNA polymerase to the halted RNA2 complex triggers the recruitment of ERCC6 or excision repair 6. ERCC gene encodes a protein called cocaine syndrome B, CSB. The ERCC6 protein recruits ERCC8 or CSA protein. ERCC8 is a part of ubiquitin ligase complex. The ubiquitin ligase complex also includes DDB1, CAL4A or CAL4B and RBX1. The ERCC8 ubiquitin ligase complex is one of the key regulators of TCNER which causes ubiquitination of one of the more factors involved in this repair process including the blocked RNA pol 2 ERCC6 and transcription elongation factor. TF2H. The TCNER pre incision complex also contains XPA, XAB2 complex, ACE MGN1, TCA1, UV SSA in complex with USP7 and EP300. The probable role of XPA is to help in the assembly and stability of the pre incision complex. XBA2 is required for pre mRNA splicing and also modulate the structure of the nascent mRNA DNA hybrid through its RNA DNA helicase activity. TCA1 helps in the backtracking of the, the RNA pol 2 this allows the repair proteins to get access to the DMA site. So, this figure is a model of CSB's distinct activities in transcription coupled uh, DNA repair. So, you can see here on the top the targeting of CSB to less installed transcription. So, due to this lesion here as already discussed earlier the RNA polymerase 2 cannot progress further and therefore, it is stalled. CSB has two distinct actions once recruited in this step you can see the recruitment of the uh, CSB. 
protein factor recruitment is one action that occurs independently of nucleosum repositioning. Components of the nucleotide excision repair complex, the uh, CSA CSN, E3 ligase complex and the TF2H transcription elongation complex are all recruited at this stage. CSB also recruits NAP1, L1 and NAP1, L4 to lesion stalled transcription sites. In the lower right, we can see the nucleosome repositioning which is required for a second action. CSB moves nucleosomes in combination with NAP1 like histone chaperons to allow effective DNA repair and or continuation of transcription following the repair. Let us move to the next type of repair which is known as the mismatch repair. The mismatch repair mechanism fixes sort insertion and deletion loops within repetitive DNA sequences that have resulted from strand slippage events and base mismatches produced during the DNA replication. Mismatch repair pathway is highly conserved whether in eukaryotes or prokaryotes and mainly associated with DNA replication increasing replication fidelity by around 100 folds. Mismatch repair consists of the following basic steps. In the first step, a detector or sensor MUT as homologue is employed to detect or identify the mismatch. The sensor then activates a set of proteins, a MUT L homologue and an exonuclease that select the nascent DNA strand to be repaired, nick the strand, exonucleotically remove a region of the nucleotides containing the mismatch, a DNA polymerase resynthesizes the strand and a DNA ligase finally seals the remaining nick. Let us study the E. coli DNA mismatch repair pathway. The following proteins are required for E. coli MMR pathway, MAT S, MAT L or mutator S, mutator L, uh, MAT H and finally DNA helicase 2. What does MATES do? As already told, it can recognize base mismatches and small nucleotide insertion or deletion. MATL interacts directly with the MATES and enhances its ability to recognize mismatches, recruits and activates MATH. MATH can specifically incise the unmethylated nascent DNA strand of hemimethylated DGATC which acts as the initiation site for the mismatch provoked excision. DNA helicase 2 generates single stranded DNA once it is loaded at the nick and opens the duplex from the nick towards the mismatch. The single stranded DNA binding protein SSB is then rapidly bound by single stranded binding protein to prevent it from duplex uh, formation. Let us now discuss the E. coli DNA mismatch repair pathway in little bit of details. The various proteins required for this MMR pathway in E. coli like MATS, MATL, MATH, then DNA helicase 2 endonucleases and DNA polymerase 3 holoenzyme and finally the DNA ligase. So, these proteins carry out various functions in this uh, repair pathway. For example, MAT S recognizes the base mismatches and small nucleotide insertion deletions. The MAT L interacts with directly with MAT S and enhances its ability to recognize its mismatches, recruits and activates the MAT H. The MAT H can specifically incise the unmethylated nascent DNA strand of hemimethylated DGATC, which acts as the initiation site for mismatch provoked excision. The DNA helicase 2 generates single stranded DNA once it is loaded at the nick and opens the duplex from the nick towards the mismatch. The single stranded DNA binding protein SSB is then rapidly bound by single stranded binding proteins to prevent in from duplex uh, formation. 
in the fifth step the exonucleases which are XO1 or XOX and have 3 prime to 5 prime exonucleus activity or XO7 or RecJ which has 5 prime to 3 prime exonucleus activity excises the nicked strand from the nicked site up to and slightly past the mismatch depending on the location of the strand break relative to the mismatch. DNA polymerase 3 follow enzyme resynthesizes at the single stranded gap while the DNA ligase seals the nick. In human and other eukaryotes, the MMR process is almost similar and controlled by homologs of the above proteins as discussed. So, in this figure, we can see uh, the eukaryotic MMR, uh, the MAT as alpha, which recognizes base base mismatches, and MAT L alpha, uh, it is next the 3 prime to 5 prime side of the mismatched base of the discontinuous strand in figure A. In figure B, we can see the MMR in mud itchless uh, bacteria, mismatched bases are recognized by mass mud S and incision of the discontinuous strand by mud L. In figure C, we can see the E. coli MMR mud S recognizes mismatched bases and mud L interacts with and stabilizes the complex. Then MAT H, H endonuclease is activated to incise the unmethylated GATC site to create an entry point for the excision reaction. Let us now examine the reaction uh, in uh, eukaryotes as well as in uh, E. coli. So, you can see in figure A the eukaryotic MMR uh, where MAT S alpha recognizes base base mismatches and MAT L alpha next the 3 prime or 5 prime side of the mismatched base on the discontinuous strand. In B you can see the MMR in MAT H less bacteria where mismatched bases are recognized by MAT S and incision of discontinuous strand by MAT L. In figure C is the E. coli MMR here MAT S recognizes mismatched bases and MAT L interacts with and stabilizes the complex. Then MAT H endonuclease is activated to incise the unmethylated GATC site to create an entry point for the excision reaction. In uh, figure A, you can see the resulting DNA segment is excised by XO1 nuclease in cooperation with the single stranded DNA binding protein RPA. In the figure B, you can see the error containing DNA strand is removed by the cooperative function of DNA helicases such as UVRD, the exonuclease RecJ and XO1 and the single stranded DNA binding protein SSB. In the case of E. coli MMR, the DNA helicase, a single stranded DNA binding protein and several exonucleases are involved in the excision reaction. In eukaryotes, as seen in figure A, the DNA strand is resynthesized re by uh, DNA polymerase delta and DNA ligase 1. Uh, will do the ligation reaction. Whereas, in mud H less bacteria, DNA polymerase 3 and DNA ligase does the job. In E. coli, the DNA polymerase 3 and the DNA ligase fill up the gap to complete the repair. So, this is a comparison between the eukaryotic MMR and E. coli MMR and uh, with MMR in mud is less uh, bacteria. Let us now go to the fifth type of repair mechanism which is the translation synthesis. Cells copy DNA that has unrepaired damage that blocks the replication fork from moving further through a process called translational 
translation DNA synthesis or uh, TLS. It is carried out by highly conserved TLS polymer polymerases. There are a total of 11 TLS poly polymerases uh, reported and uh, uh, these are divided into Y, B, X and A families. This damage tolerance mechanism is frequently uh, involved in incorporating erroneous bases and the cells survive uh, as a outcome of these, but are often associated with an increased risk of carcinogenesis and mutagenesis. Uh, let us discuss the polymerase switch model of translation uh, synthesis. The other model is the gap filling uh, model. In polymerase switch model, the TLS polymerase combines sequentially in a two step procedure to replicate through the deannulation at a forked replication that has halted. A nucleotide opposing the DNA lesion is first incorporated by an inserter TLS enzyme which is typically a Pol N, uh, a Pol L and Pol K and less frequently Rev1 or uh, Pol Gita. So, there are two types of translational uh, synthesis. Uh, one is the polymerase uh, switch translational synthesis or the polymerase switch model. The other one is the gap filling model. In the polymerase switch model of translational uh, synthesis, there are two sequential steps uh, to replicate through the deannulation and the fog replication which has been halted. A nucleotide opposing the deannulation is first incorporated by an inserter TLS enzyme and it has various members as you can see in this list. In the second step, the primer template termina extended by an extender TLS enzyme, which typically do not always uh, uh, is performed, but in some cases uh, by another enzyme called uh, POLK. In the gap filling model of translation synthesis, TLS synthesis machinery targets the single stranded gaps left behind during replication by replicative polymerases or through an incomplete DNA repair process. The precise sequence of events for a gap TLS is still unknown. However, experiments on mouse cells have shown that Rev1 plays a crucial role in post replicative gap filling. Similarly, Rev3 is important for TLS across gaps opposite uh, uh, to 6, 4 photoproducts. Both Rev1 and Rev3 are error prone DNA polymerases which function as inserter and extender uh, polymerases. Let us now discuss the six type of uh, DNA repair which is the interstrand crosslink repair. Interstrand crosslinks are DNA lessons in which two bases from complementary strands are covalently linked due to the activity of various crosslinking as in such as nitrogen mustards mutamycin C, alkylating lesions, lesions etc. They are highly toxic DNA lesions and can block DNA from transcription and replication by inhibiting DNA strand separation. The Fanconi anemia proteins identify and treat these lesions. Interstrand crosslink repair is initiated in a cell cycle dependent way by chromatin loading of the FA proteins. Uh, let us discuss the ICL removal in G0 G1 phase cycle. In G0 G1 phase of cell cycle, ICL removes uh, as described below, recognition of an ICL by NER machinery uh, takes place. In ICL block transcription CSA and CSB, two specific factors for transcription couple NER are needed to load the incision complex. On the other hand, for ICLs located in non transcript regions, the XPC HHR23B damage recognition factor complex loads the NER incision complex. The first incision is introduced by the incision complex composed of XPA, RPA, TF2H and XPG. The ICL lesion with the oligonucleotides is bypassed by TLS polymerases after the first incision. The second incision is introduced by another NER incision complex. So, here we can see the ICL repair model in quiescent cells 
or geno G1 cells phase. The NER machinery recognizes an ICL on the DNA. In the event of ICL blocked transcription, two transcription couple NER specific factors CSA and CSB are required to load the incision complex. In contrast for ICLs in the non transcribed areas, the XPC HHR23B complex is in charge of loading the NER incision complex. The incision complex comprising XPA, RPA, TF2H, XPF, ERCC1, XPZ initiates the initial incision. Following the initial incision, a TLS polymerase such as uh, DNA polymerase or REV1 bypasses the ICL lesion with the oligonucleotide. Another NER incision complex initiates the second incision. ICL repair in S phase. ICL lesions can block DNA replication forks. The FANCM FAP24MH F complex binds to a stall replication fork and recruits both the FA core complex and BLA top 3 alpha RM1 BTR complex. Active FA core complex mono ubiquitinates both FAN CD2 and FAN C1, which allows incisions of the ICL using unique uh, structure specific endonucleases such as XPF. Uh, fan CQ, ERCC1, SLX4, Fan CP, SLX1, Mass81, EME1, and uh, Fan1. The, the incision initiates a double strand break, which is repaired through homologous recombination. Both RAD51 recombinase parallax and uh, BRCA complexes are required uh, for the formation of RAD51 filaments at damage sites. These double strand breaks mechanisms will be discussed in detail uh, separately. Let us now go to the seventh uh, repair mechanism, the single strand uh, break repair. These single strand breaks are caused by oxidative damage to the DNA. A basic sites, errors made by DNA topomerase 1, etc. Unrepaired SSBs cause DNA replication stress and transcription pausing and overactivation of PARP resulting in genomic instability and human illnesses such as cancer, heart failure and uh, neurological uh, disorders. These SSBs are repaired by various DNA repair mechanisms. There is a canonical SSB repair pathway uh, which is a rapid global SSB repair mechanism and includes SSB detection, DNA and processing. DNA gap filling and DNA ligation. Sometimes the SSB repair pathway is considered as a specialized sub pathway of base excision repair as discussed earlier. PARP1, poly ADP ribose polymerase 1 and X-ray repair cross complementing protein 1 or XRCC1 play key, key roles in the rapid global SSB repair pathway. Recent studies have also showed that SSBs can also be repaired by either homologous recombination or alternative homologous mediated SSB repair pathway. Depending on the source of the SSB, uh, SSB repair occurs by one of the three possible mechanisms. Uh, the first one is in the long patch pathway, SSB are transiently identified by uh, poly ADP ribose polymerase 1 or PARP1 which undergoes a rapid cycle of poly ADP ribosylation before dis dissociating to detect the subsequent SSB. Then the ends are processed by the apirinic, apirimidic endonuclease 1, APE1, uh, P and KP and APTX. After that, the damaged 5 prime termini are removed by FAN1 in association with PARP1 and PCNA. The gap is then filled up by uh, polymerase beta in association with uh, delta and epsilon. Finally, the ligation is performed by league 1 with the help of PCNA and XPCC1. In a short patch 
pathway ap1 recognizes ssbs produced during base excision repair which then uses a end processing pathway similar to the long patch repair however only the polymerase beta enzyme performs the gap filling step which is followed by ligation catalyzed by lig3 in top one ssb pathway the end processing is carried out by the tdp1 uh, which eliminates top one from the treatment double strand breaks generated from ssbs during dna replication can cause chromosomal breaks and translocations resulting in severe genomic instability if not repaired quickly and these are addressed by uh, the double strand break uh, pathways so you can see here uh, the left arm uh, is having endogenous reactive oxygen species and hydrogen uh, peroxide basically these are oxidative salts uh, by these uh, reactive oxygen species and in the right arm or pathway 2 aberrant top 1 activity uh, PARP1 is one of the first proteins to be attracted to the uh, SSB site. Poly-ADP ribulase, ribose glycohydrolase also regulates poly-ADP ribosylation or PARC. Following the damage detection step, X-ray repair cross complementing protein 1, XRCC1 recruits several key proteins required for broken DNA processing, DNA end processing and DNA ligation to the sites of damage including DNA polymerase, polynucleotide kinase, uh, APTX, tyrosyl DNA, phosphodiesterase 1 and DNA ligase 3. Uh, this gap filling requires either DNA ligase 1 or like to depending on the size of the gap. End resection is important in SSB uh, repair. The enzymatic end processing at SSB site uh, may be performed in two directions 3 prime to 5 prime or 5 prime to 3 prime which are referred to as 3 prime 5 prime SSB resection and 5 prime 3 prime SSB end resection respectively. In cell free egg extracts of Genopus, oxidative DNA damage derived indirect SSBs are reported to be processed by AP2 uh, in the 3 prime to 5 prime direction to promote ATR CHQ1 DNA damage response pathway which stabilizes replication forks and prevents generation of DNA double strand breaks. Few enzymes associated with DNA metabolism such as uh, TDP2 and APTX can digest SSB ends in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction suggesting a possible mechanism of 5 prime to 3 prime SSB and resection. So, in this figure uh, 4 steps of 3 prime to 5 prime SSB and uh, resection is being shown. In the first step SSB end sensing and uh, processing uh, takes place. In the second step initiation, initiation of the SSB and resection takes place. In the third step continuation of the SSP and resection happens and there is a finally a termination of the end resection at one uh, particular point and as a result of this a SSB DNA gap uh, is uh, created. What happens if there are defects in DNA repair and all the 7 different DNA repair, repair mechanisms uh, fail to operate. This will lead to various kinds of genetic diseases as uh, told in the beginning of these lectures. Some of the diseases that may occur uh, due to defects in the DNA repair mechanism uh, are uh, Fanconi anemia, uh, Geroderma, pigmentosum, cocaine syndrome, trichothiodystrophy and there are many. Uh, these are some of the uh, diseases and the list is endless. As already told uh, to you in the beginning of the lecture, if the DNA repair mechanisms fails, it may lead to many mutations and genetic diseases. 
The cell is quite rich uh, in its repertory of DNA repair mechanisms and we have discussed in detail uh, about seven different DNA damage repair mechanisms and uh, we are going to discuss about the double stranded uh, break repair uh, extent, uh, in detail uh, separately. Uh, these are some of the examples of genetic diseases which may occur due to failure in the DNA repair mechanisms. Uh, for example, Fanconi anemia, xeroderma pigmentosum, uh, cocaine syndrome, trichothiodystrophy, etc. But there are many other uh, which uh, you can uh, find out uh, as, as a small assignment. Uh, thank you for your uh, patient hearing. Mm -hmm.